Would you please tell us which inks are exclusive to you or stocked only by the Goulet Pen Company and how they came to be? That would be interesting. Uh, well, Robert, I will tell you I will tell you some stories about our exclusive inks. Um, well, first off, they're all noodlers. I'll say that. Um, we've, uh, when it comes to ink, um, we have uh, really had a good relationship with noodlers, but that's, that's part of it. Part of it too is just the size of the company. So most of the ink companies out there are quite large. Uh, in terms of what they're producing or they're shipping worldwide. So the quantities they need to make things make it so that uh, exclusive inks are not entirely practical for them. So that said, um, we have not had a lot of opportunities to have exclusive inks with other companies. Perhaps it could be a possibility down the road. I don't know. We will see. But uh, Noodlers has been our golden opportunity for exclusive inks. Um, that said, most of the exclusive inks that we've ever had have just been opportunistic and not things that we've actually developed ourselves. So I'll take you through them all. Um, let me start out with ones that we no longer carry because um, it just seems like a good place to start. Um, Noodler's Russian and UK inks. Now, Nathan made a whole slew of these things, but there were several that we carried at one point in time. We had Noodler's El Lawrence, Matahari's Cordial, Empire Red, Socrates, Tchaikovsky, Dostoevsky, Essenin, Kuprin, Rachmaninoff, and Pasternak. And Jenny, don't even try to throw images on all these if you can't. I don't know if you can, maybe. Jenny's actually not even here today as I'm recording this, but Jenny, if you're editing this after the fact and you're trying to find images for all these and you can't, it's okay because we don't carry them anymore. But we might have them somewhere. Um, but anyway, so these are all, they were all like permanent and light fast and all this kind of stuff. Very kind of extreme properties. They were all more expensive. Um, and, you know, like all the, U the Russian ones were all like UV reactive and stuff like that. So they're pretty kooky inks in terms of their properties. Um, the problem was the dyes that were used to make these things were not very readily available. So we got the opportunity to get an exclusive with them. They were not being made at the time. We had some interest. We had to get a lot of, of interest for them from our customers for these UK Russian inks. So we talked to Nathan and, uh, and s wanted to see if we could get them. He had some dyes around, but when it came time to reorder and get these dyes again, there were certain components he just couldn't get. So we had massive stock outages massive stock outages. I'm talking some of them like a year to a year and a half at a time in between shipments. I mean, literally we'd get like 30 bottles and then be out for a year. It was really frustrating for everybody, including Nathan. So it got to be, it got to be where stock was so difficult for most of them, we slowly started to dis discontinue them from our offering. Um, the ones that we had decent stock of were like El Lawrence and Empire Red. Um, but even still, we hit issues with those recently and they're now on uh, kind of a, uh, semi-permanent hiatus. So I don't know if some of these will come back. It all depends on dye availability and what Nathan is able to do. He's also busy as stinking all get out. So he's not really looking to go around and make a bunch of special projects for himself. So we'll have to see if the opportunity comes about to be making these again. So that's all the ones that we no longer carry. The ones that we still carry, uh, Noodler's Kung De Chang. This was actually an exclusive to another retailer. I think it was Jet Pens years ago, and uh, Nathan developed this ink. Really cool story of how he developed it. Um, but uh, he came out with this ink, and uh, there was a lapse in uh, its availability, and the opportunity came up for us to carry it, and we begged for the exclusive, uh, and we're able to kind of get a shot at it. And you know, with all the exclusives, we had to buy them in a pretty hefty quantity, so it was a bit of a gamble at the time. You know, but I'm really glad we did. That one's been uh, really good. And then uh, Manjira Nakahama Whaleman Sepia is kind of in the same boat. It was also uh, a re an exclusive that came available. Uh, Nathan is really, really pretty loyal when it comes to exclusives. Like he will hang on to them until the retailer like really says a firm like we don't want this anymore. And even then I'll kind of hang on for a while um, if it's like a retailer exclusive. So he honors that pretty well, which really comes to our advantage once we are actually have the exclusive. Um, so that's one, uh, both of those two inks, we carried them kind of at the same time because the opportunity came about. Uh, the next one is kind of an interesting, this is a Noodler's Blue Erase and Black Erase. And this is a whiteboard ink. Um, and 
What's interesting about these is it's not really an exclusive. We've just kind of been the only one that's had it. So we didn't set up like a particular exclusive relationship on these colors um, because we um, didn't really need to. So it was interesting how Nathan came about this one. He made a batch of these two inks to prototype for the, I think it was the 2010 New England Pen Show um, up where uh, he's in the Boston area. So he's up in, up in that way. And uh, he brought it there. It was not super well received. He made a, just a quick video on the ink and then put it out and was not going to make any more of it and just kind of sold it off. So we started getting interest in the ink. And when we told him mm -hmm. people were interested, he says, well, I'm sorry, it's been discontinued. And s we were getting enough interest where we were like, you know, Nathan, this is kind of a unique ink. You know, could you, I think you should bring it back. And he was like, well, I don't really want to, but if you guys buy at least this much of it, I'll go ahead and make it and you can just kind of sell it, whatever. Uh, and he did that and we sold it, whatever. And, you know, we asked him for more and he made more. And that's just kind of how it's been going for like the last five years. So basically, yeah, I think it's now it's to the point where I don't, I don't even know if other people have it. We've never explicitly said like we want an exclusive on this particular ink just because that's just, I don't know, it just never really came about. So we've, we've been the only ones to have it for quite some time. I think now it's, it, he's opened it up maybe and it's a little more readily available. Um, I don't feel like we need to have an exclusive on that one. It's kind of just an interesting ink that I think, um, you know, Nathan wanted to do. It was really kind of his project anyway. Um, but, you know, we'll see. So there's that one. Uh, another exclusive we have is Noodler's Upper Ganges Blue. Nathan had made this previously. This is kind of like more like the Russian UK. It wasn't a retailer exclusive, but it was uh, a nation exclusive. And he hadn't made it for a few a while. I don't know exactly how long. There was interest that came about, especially because we had Liberty's Elysium first, which I'm going to talk about in a second. And then there was uh, some interest in getting a more permanent version of that ink, which is essentially what Upper Ganges is. Uh, and so when we asked him about making it as an exclusive, he was like, all right, what, what the heck? So we started getting that as an exclusive, and that's pretty much it. Um, next one we're going to get into, uh, we have two inks that we have actually had a heavy influence in developing that we really consider like our Goulet exclusives. Like we, we really, it's one thing to like just have an exclusive ability to sell something. It's another thing to actually develop it because like these things are like no one else is ever going to have these because we're never going to give them up. Um, Noodler's Purple Heart is the first one. It's the first true exclusive that we developed with Nathan. Um, and it was uh, basically, I'm a big George Washington fan. I think he uh, did a great job in starting our country. And uh, I'm from Virginia, so uh, very familiar with uh, Virginia history and all that. So I wanted to do an, a Virginia-themed ink specifically around George Washington. So Nathan and I threw around some ideas. He mentioned that he had been prototyping, like, a, you know, we, we talked about having something that was maybe lubricated and stuff like that. And he says, well, I've got this lubricated purple I've been playing around with. And we were like, well, George Washington, the Purple Heart, you know, badge of military merit. Could we do something there? He prototyped it. You know, we saw the ink. We were like, oh, this is really nice. Let's do that. So we themed it. Nathan really did all the theming and the design work on the bottle and everything. We just kind of gave him the idea. And he's, he's kind of a genius when it comes to that stuff. So he really did the heavy lifting. Uh, and then Purple Heart was born. It was pretty well received. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think uh, a good job was done with that. And then uh, Liberty's Elysium was really the one that uh, was kind of the big one. So Liberty's Elysium uh, kind of came out, and I really wanted a, a, um, a Patrick Henry themed ink because I went to Patrick Henry High School. Uh, I'm Scotchtown, which is where he was born, is right up the street here. Uh, there's a lot of Patrick Henry things, you know, in Richmond here. He's got the Give Me Liberty, Give Me Death speech uh, that he gave and all that. And there's a lot of very rich Virginia history related to that. So we really wanted a Patrick Henry themed ink. Uh, and I really wanted, that was, so that was kind of the theme. And then the color, I wanted it to be a Goulet Blue. I really loved Noodler's Blue. I was really hot on that ink at the time. I clearly have an infatuation with Cerulean Blue. So, um, and that goes back to like my childhood. And uh, that's what I really wanted. I wanted ink that would match the Goulet Blue splatter that we have for our logo. So I basically wanted that, but with permanent properties. So I wanted that theme with a, with a Noodler's Blue that was permanent, uh, as permanent as possible. And that one was actually a little bit of drama because when we came out with it, Nathan, you know, we, we tested it, prototyped it. We were like, cool, looks good. We were like, well, it's not like, 
you know, Noodler's black level permanence, but you know, you can, it, the vibrancy washes out of the blue, but there's still a very readable, you know, color that's left behind. It's a little darker shade of blue that's left behind, um, but we considered that to be permanence. There was a bit of drama on, you know, FPN and some of the other places uh, that came out when we came out with that ink because, you know, we, we decided with Nathan to call it bulletproof. Um, because that it was either bulletproof or not back at that time. Uh, but there was pushback on that because it wasn't as permanent as people felt that bulletproof should be called. Now, the, the bulletproof is a Noodler's made-up term anyway. Um, and the, the darker blue component in Liberty's Elysium uh, will, is bulletproof and it will not wash away with bleach and everything. Uh, but because the whole of the ink wasn't bulletproof, people felt that that was not fair to call it that. So... Um, we actually underwent some testing and a reformulation. And you can look at it, all this on the blog back in uh, 2013 and see all, as all the drama unfolded. And then I tested it. I tested different, you know, versions of it. And Nathan said, like, you can go more permanent, but the color is going to be flatter. It's going to be less vibrant and so on. And if you look at Upper Ganges Blue as a, as a kind of an extreme end of that, and like uh, Noodler's Luxury Blue and Periwinkle and those types of blues, they're very flat. There's no shading. They absorb into the paper. They feather more. That's just inherently the quality you get when you get to that level of permanence with the blue dyes. So we, it was a fine line. So it was essentially like, if you think about it as a gradient, you could get more on the upper Ganges, you know, luxury blue side of things and get a lot of permanence, but less of the other factors that you like. You could go more towards the Noodler's blue and have like no permanence, but with a lot of vibrancy. So Liberty's Elysium was kind of in the middle there somewhere. So it had a lot of the permanent factors, but it also had the vibrancy. So it was a good compromise for everybody. And then the theming of that ink was just phenomenal. Nathan took the whole Patrick Henry theme of it and really kind of ran with it and went nuts. So that was really kind of cool. So Liberty's Elysium is definitely like what I consider to be our flagship ink. It is one of the best selling inks that we have overall with all brands, all colors. One of the uh, top I would say it's consistently in the top five, regularly in the top three of the inks that we sell. So really happy about that. It's just, I love that ink, love the theme, love the color, and love the story behind it and the relationship and kind of what it embodies about our collaboration with Noodlers.